In this video, we're going to look at how we can interpret remainders to division word problems. So each one of these problems, the remainder can be interpreted by using one of these five strategies. Strategy A is using only the whole number, which means you're going to ignore the remainder. Strategy B is rounding up the remainder so that our answer becomes the next whole number. Strategy C is writing your answer as a mixed number, so the remainder will be written as a fraction. Strategy D is writing the remainder as a decimal. And strategy E is only you caring about the remainder. The remainder is the answer to your problem. Problem 1 says Nicole has 122 books to put on shelves. She decides to put 15 books on a shelf as often as she can. How many shelves does she need to hold all of the books? Here is one of your keywords. We want to make sure we hold all of the books. So I started out with 122 books. I'm splitting them into groups of 15. Each group of 15 is one shelf. So I'm looking for altogether how many shelves do I need. I'm going to go ahead and start my division. 15 does not go into 1. It does not go into 12, but it does go into 122. If you aren't sure, you can do a couple of strategies. You can make a list of 15s and count by 15s until you get to approximately 122. Or you can, out to the side, you can do some side multiplication where you are using your estimation skills to figure out how many times approximately 15 goes into 122. With my list right here, I'm never going to have to go past 9 because I can never put it all, a, a number larger than 9 in any one place value. So you'll notice that if I go even up to 9, that would be using 135 books, and I don't have 135 books. So I'm going to say it goes in a hundred, it goes in eight times, which is using up 120 books. So I have two books left over. Now the question says, how many shells will it take to hold all of my books? I need to ask myself, will eight shells be enough? Well, if I want to put these two books on a shelf, I need eight shelves plus one more shelf for those last two books. So instead of having eight and two fifteenths shelves, I rounded this up to nine. So my answer is nine shelves, and I use strategy B. Problem two says four children helped Mr. Johnson clean his garage. Mr. Johnson has $18 that he's going to share equally between all four children. How much will each child get? Here is our key word here. When we say something is equally, it means we want an exact answer. So I only have two strategies that will give me an exact answer, and that is C or D, both of which indicate that my remainder is going to be present in my answer. It will either be present as a fraction or it will be present as a decimal. Now this problem, I want to find out how much money each person is getting. So that tells me that my problem, my remain or my answer is going to look like money. So it's going to have dollars and cents. It will have a decimal. So knowing that, I'm going to make my problem look like dollars and cents, $18. I'm splitting this among four people. I'm going to go ahead and label my dividend dollars. And my quotient is also going to be dollars. Bring my decimal up and I can start dividing. 4 does not go into 1. It goes into 18 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. Bring down my next 0. Notice that I am not bringing my decimal down. My decimal is it simply goes straight up to indicate where the 1's place is, always to the left of the decimal. 4 goes into 20 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Bring down my last 0. And 4 goes into 0, 0 times. So I have an answer of $4.50. And I use strategy D. Now notice if I had done this problem without making my dividend look like money, that I would have gotten a remainder of $2. So I would have had 4 and 2 fourths dollars going to each person. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to change this remainder right here, two-fourths dollars, to a decimal. Because when we're talking about dollars, we're talking about dollars and cents. So what I did is I kept dividing, and I changed this remainder two-fourths 
into $2 split among four people, which gives each person 50 cents. Problem number three says Andre and his sisters picked 105 pounds of grapes for their family's farm stand. They put the same amount of grapes into each of 30 bags. How many pounds of grapes were in each bag? So I have 105 pounds of grapes. I'm dividing those into groups of 30 because I have 30 bags. And I can go ahead and start doing division, but what I'm looking for is how many pounds will go into each bag. 30 does not go into 1 or into 10, but it goes into 105 3 times. 3 times 30 is 90, and I have a remainder of 15 pounds. Now I need to ask myself, can I put 3 and 15 thirtieths pounds in each bag? And pounds is something that I can split up. It makes perfect sense to have a fraction of a pound. In fact, 15 thirtieths is the same thing as one half. So it makes perfect sense for me to say three and one half pounds of grapes go into each bag. So my answer will be three and one half pounds. And I left my remainder as a fraction and combine that with my mixed number, which is called, would combine that with my whole number, which is called a mixed number. So I use strategy C. Problem four says you are organizing a trolley ride for 95 total students, teachers, and parents. If each trolley can seat 15 people, how many trolleys do you need? So I have 95 people, students, teachers, and parents combined. I'm splitting them into groups of 15. Each group of 15 is one trolley. So I'm trying to figure out how many trolleys I'm going to need. In this problem, I'm going to assume that all those students, teachers, and parents we want to put on a trolley, we don't want to leave people behind. So 15 does not go into 9. It goes into 90 six times. If you didn't know that, you would have to either make a list of 15s, or you could use estimation and then some side multiplication to figure out approximately how many times does 15 go into 95. In my list right here, you can see seven times is too much. So six times is what I'm going to use. Six times 15 is 90. I have five people left over. So if I were to write my fraction or my answer as a mixed number, I would be saying six and 15, five fifteenths trolleys. And it wouldn't make sense for me to take five fifteenths, a fraction of a trolley. If I want to put these last five people on a trolley, six trolleys will not be enough. So I need to take six trolleys plus one more trolley, which gives me seven trolleys. And I rounded up my answer to the next whole number, which is strategy B. Problem number five says Marcia has 412 bouquets of flowers for centerpieces. She uses eight flowers for each centerpiece. How many centerpieces can she make? So I have 412 bouquets of flowers. And I'm trying to split each of those bouquets into groups of eight flowers each because it takes eight bouquets of flowers to make one centerpiece. So I'm trying to figure out how many centerpieces we can make. And I'm ready to do some division. Eight does not go into four, but it goes into 41 five times. Eight goes into 12 one time. I have a remainder of four bouquets of flowers. So now I need to ask myself, if I have 51 and 4 eighths as my answer, can I make 51 and 4 eighths centerpieces? Can I make a fraction of a centerpiece? And in this case, it wouldn't make sense to make a fraction of a centerpiece. These last four bouquets of flowers do not make a complete centerpiece. So all I can do is make 51 complete centerpieces. And I ignored my remainder and used only the whole number, which is strategy A. Problem six says one plant container holds 14 tomato seedlings. If you have 1,113 seedlings, how many containers do you need to hold all the seedlings? So I've circled a keyword. I want to make sure that I hold all of my seedlings. 
So I had 1,113 of those seedlings. I'm putting them into groups of 14 because each container can hold 14 seedlings. So if I don't know my 14s, I am going to either have to make a list or use estimation and some side multiplication. But I can go ahead and start my division. 14 does not go into 1 or 11. It goes into 111 a certain number of times. I'm going to go ahead and make a list here because I don't have all my 14s memorized. 5 14s would be, what, 70? 6 would be 84. 7 would be 98. I'm getting very close now. 8 would be 112. So 8 is too many. Looks like it's going to be 7 times. 7 times 14 is 98. Make sure that you do some regrouping here when you subtract. So I have 13. I can bring down my next 3 of 133. And I might have to make my list a little bit longer. Looks like this time 9 is going to be my number here. I can't go past 9 because I can't put a 10 in a place value. So this will be 126. Again, do some regrouping when you subtract. And I have 7 seedlings left over. So you need to ask yourself, does it make sense for me to have 74 and 7 14 containers? And in this case, I want to make sure I put all of my seedlings in a container anyway. So 79 containers is not enough. I need one more container to put all of my seedlings in. So I need 80 total containers. I rounded up my answer, which is strategy B. Notice that in my last container, I will only have seven seedlings and I could have held 14. So there will be seven empty spaces. Problem number seven says Fiona bought 2,212 stickers to make a sticker book. If she places 18 stickers on each page, how many pages will her sticker book have? Sometimes we do have to make small assumptions in word problems. And in this problem, I am going to assume that she is putting all of her stickers into her book. So we started out with 2,212 stickers. I'm putting 18 onto a page, so I'm splitting it into groups of 18, and I want to know how many pages that will take. I don't know my 18s, so I probably am either going to have to make a list or use some estimation and side multiplication, but I can go ahead and start. 18 does not go into 2. It goes into 22 one time. I have, a rem I have left over 4, so I'm going to regroup that with the 1. Now I have 41. 18 goes into 41 twice, and I do know that 118 is 18 and 218s is 36. Looks like I may luck out in this problem and not have to do too much counting by 18s. So I'm going to do one more 18 here if I want to right here, and this gives me, what, 54, which is too much, so I'm going to go ahead and do two times again. So I have 16 stickers left over. So I need to think, if I get 122 and 16 18ths pages, does that make sense? I can't go to the store and buy 16 18ths of a page. So if I want to put all my stickers into my book, 122 pages is not enough. I need one, those 122 pages plus one more page for those extra stickers. So altogether, I need 123 pages. I rounded up to the next whole number, which was strategy B. And yes, that last page will only have 16 stickers on it when it could have held 18. So there might be two, there will be two empty spots. Question eight says there are 56 students in a school swimming club. How many relay teams of six can the students make? So I have 56 students that I am dividing into teams of six. So I'm looking for how many teams of six can I make? Six does not go into five, it goes into 56 nine times. So I have two students left over. Now in the way this problem is worded, it says how many teams of six can I make? 
So I have nine teams of six and one team of two. If I want to know how many teams of six I have, I can only make nine teams of six. Those last two students are not a full team of six, so they may have to wait their turn or we may have to rotate through and have some students act as sub subs for teams. So in this case, I ignored the remainder and used only the whole number. That was strategy A. Problem number nine, I'm going to make one correction. This is 414. So the problem says Meg cuts a 414 meter length of ribbon into four equal pieces. What is the length of each piece of ribbon? So I had 414 meters of ribbon. I'm dividing that into four equal pieces. And I'm trying to find out how many meters long each piece is. Four goes into four one time. Four does not go into one, so I must put a zero. And four goes into 14 three times. I have two meters of ribbon left over. So I need to ask myself, does it make sense to have 103 and two fourths meters of ribbon? Can I split a meter into a fraction into a part? And actually this would be one half. And yes, it makes sense to have 103 and one half meters if we are wanting to share them equally. So in this case, I'm going to write 103 and one half meters of ribbon. And I used my remainder as a fraction and combined it with my whole number. That's called a mixed number. So that was strategy C. Question 10 says a factory packed 815 teddy bears into large boxes for delivery to a toy store. Each large box held nine teddy bears. The remaining bears were packed into a small box. How many teddy bears were packed in a small box? Now notice all we care about is how many were in the small box, and the small box was the remaining bears. So in this case, I can tell right away that I want to use strategy E, which all I care about is the remainder. So I'm gonna take my 815 bears, I'm going to split them into groups of nine because I'm putting each group of nine into a large box. So that will tell me how many boxes I'm using. But in this problem, all I care about is how many bears are left over because those extra bears go into a small box. Nine does not go into eight, but it goes into 81 nine times. Nine does not go into five. So I have five bears left over. And that is what I'm looking for. Those five bears go into that small box. So my answer is five bears. Question 11 says, St. John's School were going on a school trip. There were 459 children and they could fit 35 children on a bus. How many buses will they need? So there are 459 children. We're splitting those 459 children into groups of 35. Each of those groups of 35 represents the number of children or the number of buses we need. So I'm ready to do some division. 35 does not go into 4, it goes into 45 one time. 1 times 35 is 35. I can regroup now. Now I need to know how many 35s go into 109. 135 is 35. 235 is 70. And 335 is 105. 435s will definitely be more than 109, so I can only use 3. And I then have 4 children left over. If we make the assumption that the entire school is going on this field trip and we're not leaving these 4 children behind, 13 buses will not be enough. So we're going to have to take those 13 buses plus one more so that we can fit those 4 children on it. So altogether I will have 14 buses. I rounded up my remainder, so that was answer choice B. And that last bus, unless we uh, divided all the children among 14 buses equally, that last bus will only have four kids on it. Question 12 says Jared collects and sells gargoyle eggs. He collects 1,079 eggs, which can be packed in boxes of eight. How many boxes will he need? So we have 1,079 eggs. We're putting them into groups of eight, and each group of eight is one box. So we're trying to find out how many boxes he will need. 
8 does not go into 1, it goes into 10 one time. 8 goes into 27 three times. And into 39 four times. So I have seven eggs left over. If we assume that he wants to pack all of his eggs into boxes, 134 boxes will not be enough. So he needs 134 boxes plus one more box that he can put those seven eggs in. So altogether he needs 135 boxes. We rounded up our remainder, which is strategy B. Question 13 says Andrea has a bag of 240 beads. She is making bracelets with the beads. Each bracelet takes nine beads. How many bracelets can she make? I have 240 beads. I'm splitting those beads into groups of nine. Each group of nine equals a bracelet. We are trying to find out how many bracelets she can make. So doing some division, nine goes into 24 twice. Nine goes into 60 six times. I have six beads left over. So I need to ask myself, can I have 26 and 6 ninths bracelets? No, I can't have part of a bracelet. And these six beads that are left over are not enough to make a complete bracelet. So I'm going to ignore my remainder. And then I have only 26 complete bracelets that I can make. I'm only using the whole number, which is strategy A. Problem 14 says eight students bought a gift for their teacher that cost $222. They split the cost evenly. How much money did each student contribute? So we have 222, and I'm making this look like money because I want my answer to be money. In this case, it says how much money did each student contribute? So I'm going to make this with a decimal and some zeros because I know that I'm going to want my quotient to have a decimal and some dollars and cents. So I'm splitting this among eight people. This is dollars. My quotient is also going to be dollars. Bring my decimal straight up. Eight does not go into 22. It, it does go into 22 twice. Eight goes into 62 seven times. Keep going. It goes into 60 again seven times and 8 goes into 40 five times so my answer already looks like dollars and cents so each student is then going to contribute twenty seven dollars and seventy five cents I changed my remainder to a decimal and my remainder actually was right let's see it was right here there would have been six dollars left over but i didn't want to change i wanted to change that six dollars left over into dollars or into cents because my answer would have been 27 and six eighths dollars so i took those six dollars and i still split them up among eight people and each of those eight people then contributed 75 cents more question 15 says there are 123 students at lunch each table fits nine students. How many tables will be completely filled? I want, do want to make sure that I only look at completely filled tables, but there are 123 students. I'm dividing these into groups of nine because each table seats nine students. So that will tell me how many tables are filled. Nine does not go into one, but it goes into 12 once. 9 goes into 33 three times. There is a remainder of 6. That remainder is students. So I have 13 and 6 ninths tables filled, but I want only care about the ones that are completely filled. This last table, if I wanted to seat all the students, yes, I would need 14 tables, but that last table is only seating these 6 leftover students. So my completely filled tables are 13 tables. I ignored the remainder and used only the whole number. That is strategy A. Problem 16 says Mr. Ramirez is painting tiles five different colors in equal amounts. 
If there are 2,347 tiles, how many of the tiles will be left over? So that should tell me right away, all I care about is the leftover tiles, which is the remainder. So when I do my division, all I'm going to care about is what's left over. So I'm taking 2,347 tiles, splitting them into groups of five different colors. So my quotient is going to be the number of tiles of each color. Although all I am going to care about is the number of tiles that are left over. 5 does not go into 2, it goes into 23 four times. 5 goes into 34 six times. And into 47 nine times. There are two tiles left over, so that is my answer, two tiles left over. Question 17 says Ginny is placing button, buttons into seven different containers in a pattern. If he has 1,654 buttons, how many times can he complete the pattern? So we have 1,654 buttons. We're putting them into, we're splitting them into groups of seven for each container. And we're trying to figure out how many times he can complete a pattern by putting them into different containers. So we're going to ask ourselves, does seven go into one? No, it does not. It goes into 16 twice though. And then into 25 three times. And into 44 six times. There will be two buttons left over. So he has completed this pattern 236 times, and then there are two buttons left over. The question is, how many times can he complete the pattern? This last part is not a completed pattern, so that he can only complete the pattern 236 times. We ignored the remainder and used only the whole number, strategy A. Question 18 says there are 143 kids at a camp. The counselors are buying a juice box for each kid. If juice boxes come in packs of eight, how many packs do they need to buy? So we're taking 143 kids and we are splitting that into pack, to groups of eight because juice boxes come in packs of eight. And we're trying to figure out how many of those packs of eight do we need. And we're going to have to assume that each kid is getting a juice box and nobody is being left out. 8 does not go into 1, but it goes into 14 once. 8 goes into 63 seven times. And we have a remainder of 7 kids. So if we just bought 17 packs of juice boxes, we would have 7 kids who wouldn't get anything. So we need to buy 17 packs plus one more pack, which will give us 18 packs. We rounded up our answer to the next whole number, strategy B. And yes, when we buy 18 packs, that will give us one extra juice box because we only had seven kids that are using that last pack. And that one extra juice box, we will have to either save for later or drink ourselves. Question 19 says, Amber is cutting lengths of string from a spool. The spool has 345 feet of string. If she cuts two foot lengths, how much extra string will she have? So here's your keyword, extra string. All we care about is the remainder. And this is a problem where we actually don't even really need to do the division because if I'm taking a number, an odd number like this and dividing it by two, if any odd number, when I split it in half, my remainder is always going to be one. And I can think of any odd number like this, five divided by two, equals 2 remainder 1, 7 divided by 2 equals 3 remainder 1, 11 divided by 2 equals 5 remainder 1, and so on. So the amount of extra string that I'm going to have is 1 foot of extra string, and all I cared about was the remainder, which was strategy E. Question 20 says Nancy is saving to up to buy a car. The car she wants costs $9,744. If she makes $9 per hour, how many hours will she have to work to pay for the car? So we have a $9,744 
bill that she's wanting to pay. And she is splitting that into groups of nine because she makes $9 every hour. So we're trying to figure out how many hours will she need to work. Nine goes into nine one time. Nine does not go into seven, so I must put a zero. Nine goes into 74 eight times. And into 24 twice. I have six dollars left over. So if I have any dollars left over, she has not paid off her complete bill. So if she were to only work 1,082 hours, she would still owe six dollars. So as a result, she's going to have to work one more hour, 1,082 plus one more hour. So she'll have to work 1,083 hours. Now in that last hour that she worked, she only owed $6. So she's going to earn an extra $3 that she can use to spend on something else. So she, she needs to work a total of 1,083 hours. I rounded up my remainder, which was strategy B. Question 21 says Peter has 1,553 cell phone minutes left this month. If there are five days left in the month, how many minutes can he use each day? So we have 1,553 minutes. I'm splitting that into five groups. Each of those five groups represents one day. So we're trying to figure out how many minutes he can use on each of those days. Five does not go into one, but it goes into 15 three times. Five goes into five one time. And five does not go into three. So I have a remainder of three minutes. So I have to ask myself, can you use 310 and 3 fifths minutes each day? Now normally we can split up minutes into parts. Those would be called seconds. But in this case, when you are using cell phone minutes, if you use even one second more than a full minute, it counts as a full it counts as a full minute on your bill so if he uses 310 minutes each day there is not enough and he only has 3 minutes left over we don't have a full minute for each day left over so he can only use 310 minutes each day and those extra minutes are are just going to be wasted this month or else he can use those extra minutes on any one day in particular, but he can't split them up over those five days equally. So in this case, I ignored the remainder and I used only the whole number, which was strategy A. Problem 22 says Tim lives with four of his closest friends in a house if their monthly rent is $1,758 and they split it evenly, but Tim covers the leftover. How much does Tim pay? First of all, Tim and four friends all together is five people. So we know we're going to take our $1,758 and we're going to split it among five people. We do have to make a slight assumption here. When it says Tim covers the leftover right here, we're going to have to assume that that means the left, if, if, if we didn't split this evenly and everybody just paid whole dollars, and the leftover would represent uh, where we would stop and not split it into dollars and cents. So without splitting this into dollars and cents, I'm going to go ahead and divide. I'm taking $1,758, splitting into groups of five to find out how many dollars each person will pay. One does, five does not go into one, but it goes into 17 three times. Five goes into 25 five times. And five goes into eight once. Here we do have a leftover of three dollars. And this is the part that we do have to assume that they mean that Tim will pay. So Tim will not only pay his share, $351, he will also pay the leftover. So altogether, Tim is going to be paying $354. And in this, we used two different strategies. We took just the whole number, which was A, and we took the remainder, which was E, and we combined those to get $354. Question 23 says a roller coaster holds 30 people. 
There are 252 people waiting for a ride. How many times will the roller coaster need to run so that all 252 people get a ride? So I have 252 people. I'm dividing those 252 people into groups of 30 because each roller coaster holds 30 people at a time. So we're trying to figure out how many times will the roller coaster have to run so that everybody gets to ride. 30 does not go into 2 or into 25. If I'm not sure how many times it goes into 252, I can either make a list and count by 30s, or I can use estimation and then some side multiplication to figure out how many times. In this case, I'm just making a list because it's fairly easy to count by 30s. And you'll notice I'm getting very close now. Nine times is too many, is too many people. Um, will be way too many people. So if I do eight times, that will cover 240 people. But I do have 12 people left. So if I run the roller coaster only eight times, those 12 people would not get to ride the roller coaster. So I, it, it turns out I do need to run the roller coaster nine times, eight times plus one more time for those last 12 people. So how many times will it need to run? It will need to run nine times. And I rounded up my remainder, which was strategy B. That last run of the roller coaster will only have 12 people on it when it could have held 30 people. So we'll have 18 empty seats. Question 24 says four boxes of candy cost $5. How much does each box cost? So the dividend of my problem is the $5 because I am taking my $5 and I'm dividing it among four boxes of candy. And I'm trying to find out how much does each box cost. So I'm going to want my problem to look like money because I'm going to want my quotient to look like money. So this is $5 and my quotient will also be dollars. Bring my decimal straight up and divide. Four goes into five one time. Four goes into 10 twice. And 4 goes into 20 five times. So each box of candy is going to cost $1.25. And I turn my remainder directly into a decimal, which was strategy D. If I hadn't made my problem look like money, this would have been what it would have looked like. And I would have had a remainder here. This remainder would have been $1. So what I would have had is each box of candy cost one and one fourth dollars but because money we write in dollars and cents i changed that one dollar that i had left over i split it among four boxes of candy so each box of candy got an extra quarter so each box of candy cost one dollar plus a quarter or a dollar and 25 cents problem 25 says john has a 10 foot board that he needs to cut into eight equal sections. How long should each section be? I'm taking my 10 foot board. I'm dividing it by eight sections. I want to know the length of each section, which will be in feet. Eight goes, does not go into one, but it goes into 10 one time. So I have two feet left over. If I were to write my answer as a mixed number, I would have one and two eighths feet for each section. Now normally we do not split feet into eighths, but two eighths is the same thing as one fourth, and I absolutely can split feet into fourths. In fact, each foot has 12 inches in it, and one fourth of 12 is three inches, so it makes sense for me to say one foot and three inches. I could either write my answer as one and one fourth feet, or one foot, three inches. I used my remainder as a fraction and combined it with my whole number, which is called a mixed number. So I used strategy C.